today's video, I survived for 100 days in hardcore Better Minecraft. If you don't know what Better Minecraft is, it's this insane mod pack that transforms regular Minecraft into a vivid RPG world for you to explore that is full of beautiful scenery, insane structures, and very dangerous mobs. And where there's danger, there's loot, and tons of it. And today, I will be taking on this action-packed world, and not just surviving in it, but thriving. By the end of these 100 days, I will be living my best life decked out in whatever crazy armor and weapons I can get my hands on, and I will take on not only the easy vanilla Minecraft bosses, such as the Ender Dragon and the Wither, but I will be hunting some of the big boys, such as the mighty Frostmaw and Barako the Sun Chief. Will I be able to vanquish this world and climb to the top by obtaining the most powerful of items, or will I be cut down in my prime? Watch until the end to find out. Also, if you're new here and you do go on to enjoy this video, then it would mean a lot to me if you did subscribe. I've got so many more ideas for 100 days videos, challenge videos, my brand new hardcore series, and bringing back other mods such as Arlcraft. Also, don't forget to drop a like. If we can get to 30,000 likes, then I'll do 200 days of better Minecraft. And lastly, a super quick moment from our sponsor, PainDomination.shop. That's right, for this Black Friday through Cyber Monday, all of the merch at PainDomination.shop will be 20% off. So go ahead and pick yourself or someone else up some of these gorgeous shirts and hoodies. It really supports the channel and it would mean a lot to me if you would at least stop by and check them out. Anyways, let's get right to the first day. On day one, I spawned in an ocean area surrounded by ships full of some dangerous looking mobs. And I was immediately having flashbacks to Arlcraft, which will definitely be coming back by the way. Anyway, since this world was so new and I had nothing to lose, I went straight towards one of the dangerous ships like a fly to a light bulb in the hopes of robbing them blind. I struggled to break my way onto the ship by breaking these wooden slabs in the water and once I finally got on, I began stealing wood to make myself a crafting table and some wood tools. And now that I had some protection, I guess, I began breaking random blocks above in a way that the mobs couldn't come down and get me. And then I found my first piece of free real estate. This chest had an enchanted iron chest piece with fire resistance. So after putting that on and looting the first chest, it didn't really sound like the enemies were that close to me. So I took the chest and I broke my way up and I quickly blocked off the entrance as I heard one of those pirates shoot a freaking firework at me. Honestly, I guess this is what Pirates of the Caribbean would have looked like if they were directed by Michael Bay. Anyways, now that I was safe for now, I looted the second chest that had enchanted iron pants and a freaking total of 55 iron ingots in it. So of course I put on some pants for once in my life and I crafted myself a full set of iron armor and some brand new iron tools. And now that I felt I had everything that I was going to need to get away, I jumped off of the ship and I began swimming towards the other. That is until I noticed that there was a whole bunch of spawners in the water. A lot of spawners. So I decided not to take the chance and instead I swam over to land and apparently it was already sundown and I did not want to meet whatever types of mobs this game had saved up for me. So I quickly found some nearby sheep that I kindly asked for their wool and they said no so I took it and I made myself a bed and I went to sleep for the first night. Overall, day one was quite successful. On the second day after waking up, I picked up my bed and crafting bench and I set out for the day. Honestly, these styles of mod packs are my absolute favorite because everything is new and it becomes an adventure. So after climbing over the small hill by where I had camped out for the night, I found this cozy little cottage and because of RO craft, I was very skeptical. I broke the carpets on the floor just to check for traps and it turns out there was nothing, but I did kept hearing pillager sounds so my guard was up. I climbed up the ladder to the attic only to find a bunch of god tier chests full of steak, apples, wheat, some leather, and some coal. It was safe to say that my food problem was solved, at least for now. And after borrowing this random person's house, I climbed back downstairs to find out that they were actually hiding and uh, I found them and quickly bolted outside just in case. And in classic Earlcraft fashion, 
fashion. I broke a hole in the side of their house and I cheesed both these jerks and I was happily on my way. And honestly, as I was looking around the environment, this world felt so vibrant. I felt like I was playing in Skyrim again. I continued moving on until I spotted another shack in the distance, except while looking around, I first saw this strange little structure that actually turned out to be a gravestone. So I did what any sensible person would do and I stole the gravestone anvil and I may have taken all of the bones. If this was an RPG, it would be safe to say that I would be very hated. Anyways though, after I finished grave robbing, I went to check out the cool looking shack and it had a nice chest in it with two clean diamonds inside. While I was here, I also decided to repay the owner for their kindness by stealing all of their bookshelves and I swapped my ugly white bed for his cool cyan one. And after this, I walked about a hundred blocks away from the house and I found yet another structure. I was like a candy store in a kid. I think I got that analogy wrong. I first found this small little dirt hut with windows that I broke into and underneath some carpet there was a mysterious passageway that led down to a free golden apple and potion of weakness that I could use to cure the second villager that was inside of these cages, which I was not going to do. Sorry man, but not sorry. Anyways, after leaving those two in their cages, I tried to take on another one of those ships the traditional way and I ended up digging straight into their spawner room and a whole bunch of axe boys came charging at me so quickly, so I strafed my way out of there and into the swamp. That ended up having this super cursed looking spider cave. I do not do spiders. I continued moving through the swamp until the sun started to set and I once again placed my bed out and I slept away the terrors that probably awaited me. On day three, I made my way out of the swamp and up into this gorgeous forest and the ambient noises were so good. This mod pack was so, so good. While up here, I ended up finding another little cabin and this one had some free hay bales for me to take. And I may have also swapped my bed again for this purple one, no cap. And after leaving the cabin, I saw this nearby villager and it turns out he was called a gatekeeper and he had a trade for an adventurer's guide that I conveniently had the books for. So I bought it and I unlocked a bunch of new crafting recipes with it, I think. Honestly, no clue. So I bought a second one trying to figure out what it was and it turns out it was just like a beginner's guide to one of the mods. Weird. So after I got skimmed out of the books that I had stolen from that very guy, I continued climbing through these mountains until I had gotten to the structure that I was trying to go to. And it was some sort of battle tower. I made my way inside and I began taking out each floor full of mobs that were honestly pretty easy because of the daylight that was coming in and there was some pretty decent loot in here. Overall, I got another golden apple and a bunch of food and random loot. And once I made it to the top, there was a waypoint. And boy, let me tell you how much I missed this waypoint mod. It is one of the best mods in any mod pack that you could add. You want to adventure more? Waypoints. So now that I had finished this tower, I spent the rest of the day enjoying the view as the sun began to set. And there was a massive tree castle thing in the distance that I was kind of thinking of exploring the next day. I continued to look around and I found a ton of other structures that I could explore. And also there was this random vex dude kind of just chilling in the sky with a pretty scary looking sword. And of course, after getting too close, this dude charged at me and I gave him the old one, two, no more existing for you. On day four, I woke up with a massive brain idea. I was going to try and take the waystone before I left. And unlike Arlcraft, it worked. I could now make a base and always teleport back to it if I found another waystone. This was massive. So I left the tower and I set out towards the massive tree castle thing in the distance and the next thing I know I was being chased by a pillager in full gold armor through the woods. In fact, I was actually being chased by like three. These guys were everywhere. And then I saw it. In the distance, there was a nearby bandit camp full of the guys. It was safe to say that I wanted nothing to do with them. So I finished making my way to the castle and fun fact, I'm pretty sure this is a giant massive dungeon thing. So I began inspecting the area and on the very bottom there were spawners that had skeletons and they did a pretty decent amount of damage to me. So you know what? I was going to play it safe today and I was going to leave. But I will be back for this place. I swear it. That is if I ever find one of these again. So anyways, after leaving that death trap, I was looking for the next place to explore in this whole area was dangerous. I ran into a possibly friendly but possibly not bear and while looking around this field I found a group of those tribe guys from the Mousies mobs mod. And I'm pretty sure that that village you see in the distance over there had the sun chief inside of it that I was nowhere ready to fight. 
So I kept moving on in the opposite direction, where instead I found this nice little village that gave me a free chest with some free iron armor in a monastery map. However, none of the tents ended up being real except for one that had a bunch of beds and some subpar loot. These guys were living a lie. I continued moving on and as the sun began setting again, I now found myself inside of a desert temple that while looting, I had found my first god apple of this entire world, which was pretty pog. I never really used these though because of just how rare they are, but but you know what? God tier loot is God tier loot. Am I right? On the fifth day, I made my way up to this nearby cottage in the desert on top of this hill, and it turned out that it was just another one of those gatekeepers that didn't really have anything new for me. On top of that, all the containers in his house had no loot for me to indefinitely borrow which was very rude of him, if I may add. So I left this place and I was on to the very next place that I had saw on the other side of that desert pyramid. And this place ended up being this cool little desert oasis house. I went inside of it and I searched through all of the chests with not much luck until I found the villager on the top floor and he was standing next to a chest with a whole bunch of prime loot for the taking. So after I left that guy's house, I continued in the direction away from the forest castle, and in the distance, I had seen another village-looking place. So I decided that that was where I was going to head next. That is, until I found the ultimate distraction. Just look at this cute little lizard dude, just chilling in the desert, living his best life. I would die for this lizard. I need a pet lizard in Minecraft now. Before these 100 days up, I need some of these lizards. If you would die for these lizards, leave a comment down below saying just how great they are. Honestly, lizard master race. Anyways, after that never ending distraction, just look at them. I continued towards the village until I saw another one of those little dirt houses that had a free golden apple. So I decided to stop by for a quick visit and there was an ice dragon egg inside of the chest. Are there dragons even in this mod? I low key kind of hope not, but also can I ride this thing? Is this actually a dragon egg? I needed answers, damn it. So after I finished looting that place, I finally made my way to a real village and wow. This mod pack had the villager guards mod. Plus there were all kinds of new crazy professions and this place even had a waystone similar to Arlcraft. It was safe to say that I was going to make this my brand new temporary home. So I right clicked the stone and I gave it the beautiful rightful name, Pain Topia. I bet the villagers are super excited for that name. Bet they love pain. Right? Right? Anyways, I had gotten here at the perfect time because the sun was beginning to set once again. So before I went to bed, I ran around trapping each of the villagers inside of their houses so nothing would happen to them whenever I wasn't paying attention. And after that, I placed down my bed in a house with a double chest and I finally cleaned out my inventory that I so desperately needed to do before going to sleep for the night. On day six, I started off the day by exploring this mini cemetery near my new village. Under each of these graves were hidden chests full of honestly some pretty good loot, not gonna lie. Inside of each chest were bones, emeralds, enchanted armor, and I even got an enchanted book with vein mining, which I don't know if it's good or not, but it sounds good. Plus, while I was here, I also stole all of the gravestones because, I mean, like, come on, they're, they're free anvils, which are super useful, and they cost a ton of iron to make. 31 to be exact. And I only know that because of my one block skyblock world. That, by the way, you should totally go and watch that video. It's also really good. You should watch that after this one, just saying. Cough. <clears throat> Cough. Anyways, with that shameless plug done, I spent the rest of this day exploring this nearby battle tower that I thought was super easy. That is, until a Vex jumped me. These guys did mad damage and my very short life was flashing before my eyes. I quickly ate my golden apple just in case and we ended up finishing things outside like real men. And I did not freak out and spam click at all. Nope. Not at all. After that scare, I went back into the tower and I found the source of those Satan spawn. There's a freaking spawner that was being guarded by an enchanted guy that hit me like a B-52 bomber. I guess that guy had gotten eight kills before he went to get me. Anyways, this guy was scary. So I quickly ran back down and outside and I executed this dude on the spot. It was safe to say crisis adverted. And after this, I made my way back up to the top of the tower 
and I claimed all of my gold blocks and I stole myself a second waystone. Overall, I was a pretty happy guy. And while I was up here, the sun was going down. So I used the little time that I had left to get a lay of the land and there wasn't really much, but I did decide which way I wanted to go. So now that I knew where I'd go for the next day, I headed back home for the night. And I spent a lot of the time dumping my inventory into my chests. And after that, I grabbed me some iron to make myself a much needed shield that I then upgraded to an iron shield. Honestly, such a good mod. After that, I made myself a brand new iron axe and I went to bed for the night. As Bear from Bear in the Big Blue House would say, good night moon, I think at least. I don't know why my brain thought to say this. It just does these things sometimes. Anyways, on day seven, I woke up and made a new iron hoe. So that way, whenever I go over to that nearby village that I'd seen in the distance yesterday, I could then rob them of all of their food. And immediately after leaving my house, I was greeted by a new pigeon that wanted to be my friend. So I gave this little dude some bread and instead of becoming my friend, he just wanted Becky to smash. Sad. I mean, overall, the joke was on him because I was going to name him Pierre the Pigeon because alliteration is honestly too great. Anyways though, fast forward and I found myself in the nearby village, robbing them of all of their wheat. And while I was here, I took all of their job blocks and beds too, because you know, Porter gang rise up. And after borrowing all of their stuff, I found myself with about a stack and over a half of that sweet grain. I had obtained the bread. And with that, I purged this place into a future full of joblessness and famine. My be fam. However, with no remorse, I then used the waypoint to teleport back home, and while I was here, I stole all of our wheat too, which totaled me a solid two and a half stackerinos. Pog. I then went back home and I crafted them into an inventory full of wheat, and I ended up with over eight stacks of bread. I have literally obtained that grain and gotten that bread. I have yeeted that wheat. So after amassing my great bread empire, I spent the rest of sundown in the night cleaning up around the village. I ended up breaking down a bunch of trees and I punched all of the too high grass just to make things a lot safer, just in case. And with my luck, it started raining. However, I kid you not, if Minecraft rain looked and sounded this good in vanilla, I wouldn't even mind it. I would be in love. Honestly, just listen to the rain. You even splash around when you walk in it. On the eighth day, now that I was full of food and I had two waypoints, I was now ready to explore and leave the nest. I made my way to the nearby desert that I hadn't yet explored, and of course I had this genius idea to go and smack this big bug that I found. And boy, why does this man hurt so much? After control alt deleting him, I just kind of stood here wasting food to heal fast enough to not explode from that bug's insane effects. This dude, lo look at what it's doing. What? What even? Honestly, yikes. Don't don't hit bugs, kids. Don't go home and hit bugs. Leave bugs alone, please. This guy, this guy sucks. Anyways, though, after making it out of the desert alive, I found myself in another one of those cabin structures, and this place was full of goodies. He had a full block of iron free for the taking, <clears throat> a chest full of some enchanted stuff, including a Prot 2 chainmail helmet that ended up being better than mine. I then made my way to his attic. That's a weird sentence. And he had a chest with this super cool iron hoe in it that I then swapped with mine. Trust me, you won't even notice. After stealing all of his stuff and leaving that man down bad, I found another nearby graveyard, and this one was stacked. The chest had a ton of bones, name tags, random iron and stuff, and a pair of Prot4 leather pants that I really hope I can steal the enchantment from, but if this isn't like Arlcraft, then they're kind of just Gucci leather pants that I'm never going to wear. However, on top of it all, I found the holy grail book. This boy had looting three. Now that is a devious lick. And now that those graves were properly robbed, I was on to the next even better thing, this nearby battle tower. And this time I learned the pro strat. I quickly blitzed my way through each floor and I broke all of the spawners, including the unholy vex spawner. And now that I didn't have to worry about 20 vex spawning, it was back to looting all of the chests. And these were stacked with gold, iron, and some other pretty decent loot. And after my inventory could barely handle any more, I made my way to the top to steal those beautiful golden blocks. And now that the sun went down, a blue moon spawn, which apparently increases my luck. However, I didn't quite feel ready to take on whatever may be spawning at night. So instead, I just used this waypoint to travel back home and I dumped all of my inventory into my chests. On day nine, I woke up to one of the most awful noises I have ever heard in Minecraft. 
Like, what even was that? It sounded like a demonic rooster that was inverted. Anyways, I went back to the waystone in my village, and I used it to teleport back to the battle tower, and I continued exploring around the area until I found something interesting. There was this stone brick entrance to what I thought was going to be a dungeon. However, instead, it turned out to be this sprawling underground society of villagers. And this place was massive. There are hallways upon hallways upon hallways with little dorms, there were workstations, I found rooms that had animals and crops, and there were even different areas that had grass and plants to simulate the outside. On top of all of this, there was also a bunch of blocked off dark areas that, of course, I had to go and explore. And let me say, this place really knew how to set up a vibe. This place was super ominous and kind of spooky. I didn't really have any torches, and at the time, I didn't think about grabbing any, and everything was super dark, but there were these really cool abandoned rooms. I ended up finding an abandoned library, with a chest with some books inside in an abandoned farm with a single spider that jumped down and nuked all of the crops. I have no clue what happened there, but as Harry Potter would say, Yeetus Deletus. Anyways, I continued exploring around this place and there wasn't really much loot, but it was super cool. Plus, I even found a nether portal room that was only missing one piece of obsidian and there was conveniently a chest that had two inside. So whenever I wanted to craft a pickaxe with my diamonds, I could immediately come back here and go to the nether. So I placed down a waypoint and I named it nether portal and I teleported back to the battle tower and I then stole that waypoint to replace the one that I had just used and overall, I was down in that place until the end of the next day, day 10. On day 11, I continued on my journey exploring all of the new structures nearby in the hopes of crazy loot. And there wasn't really that much that I could see until I had found a boring, regular abandoned nether portal that conveniently had some busted loot. That is, if you call flint and steel busted. Anyways, after looting that thrilling chest, I saw this nearby cobblestone entrance to something. Something that was full of zombies that were pouring out. And one by one, I clowned on these goons as I slowly ascended into the darkness. I made my way down and I broke the spawner in the center and I looted the chest which only had some coal that I guess I could use for torches so I mean that works but like where's the loot my guy? There's so many zombies. Anyways I spent a good amount of time down here and I blocked off all of the entrances so that way I could one by one go down and explore deeper and with only iron armor I didn't feel that safe down here. This place ended up being some crazy dark maze. I had no clue what else to expect down there because this place was a cesspool. So I ended up just kind of leaving. And after that, I spent the rest of the day exploring some of this truly stunning terrain. The biomes in this mod pack are crazy good. Everything looked and sounded so good. This world felt super alive. For day 12, as I was exploring, I found another one of those sky forest castle things. And this time, I was going to explore at least some of it. So while escaping the sussy witch, I used my water bucket to slowly climb all the way up to part of this apparently giant dungeon. And as I was digging into the side, I managed to yoink myself some super underwhelming loot from one of the chests. And then I learned that I was not ready to be up here. A couple of skeletons ran into my tunnel and chased me down. And these guys hurt so much. But with my smite two sword, they stood little chance. So after realizing just how much damage they did to me, I blocked them off and safely dug my way around to their spawner that I quickly erased from my presence. And now that I had thought they stopped spawning, I dug myself out an area that I could use to safely clean up the pile of peeps that had already spawned. And I just kind of sat here smacking them all around until I had enough kills for a tactical nuke. Or at least I wished that because at this point, I was guessing there were more spawners underneath me because they just kept coming. And unlike Aurocraft spawn, Spawners, these don't break after a certain amount of mobs spawning, so unless I progress further and break them, I was going to be here until Elder Scrolls 6 comes out, if it ever does. Anyways, after finally cleaning up enough of these dudes and blocking off the bottom entrance, and while exploring around this area, I had found a hidden chest room that must have been full of some good loot for all of my effort, right? Well, if you thought that, I mean, you were wrong because all I got was honey and not the browser extension, but I did at least get some more iron. Wow, so worth it. Well, at this point, I was now level 33, which was pretty pog, so I couldn't really complain. And I had been messing around with these skeletons for an entire three whole days. Yeah, it was now day 15 and that's all I had to show for it. 33 levels, 
some honey and some iron. I'm sure there's real loot in this place and it has to be somewhere, but for now I think I was done because I was gonna be here all year at this rate without any loot. But I will be back, I swear. On the 16th day, after using my trusty bucket of moistness to get down from that hellhole, I continued on my journey for loot through a really pretty cherry blossom forest. And that is until I found myself yet another cabin and immediately after opening the front door, I was greeted by an arrow to the face. I mean, at least it wasn't my knee, but now was no time for jokes because these guys hurt. However, I had the advantage because of my big hunkin' iron shield. That is, I did have the advantage until this father and son set of zombies joined in and made my life harder. Luckily though, they all got mad at each other and they deleted the pillager bow boys, but this little Phil's a zombie was hungry for my hardcore world. So I dove into the water for safety and I watched them burn in the sun. And after this incident was over, I kept searching through the forest until I then stumbled upon a field that was packed with roses. And in the middle was this quaint little village that I of course went to and robbed of all of the little resources that they had. They even gave me a map to a nearby bandit campsite. And Randy from King of the Hill was here, and I am so glad he did not hit me with pocket sand. Anyways, while I was looking around the village, in the distance I saw this really interesting looking structure that I was now going to explore. However, it was becoming night, so instead I quickly grave robbed this nearby gravesite of any and all of the loot that this place had, and I placed down my waypoint so that way I could come back tomorrow. I then used the waypoint to go back home and dump all of my inventory into my perfectly matching chests perfectly matching. On day 17, I woke up to two creepers spawn camping the waystone that I needed to go back to where I was exploring. And you know the drill, yeah, yeet. Yeah. Anyways, after teleporting back, I made my way through the swamp area and I tested out my godlike parkour skills by climbing up to the hill that had both a battle tower and the other weird structure that I wanted to explore. And once I made it to the top, as always, I ran up the battle tower and made quick work of any of the mobs while breaking all of the spawners so that way no Vex got the chance to get the best of me. Or at least that's what I thought because I then let my guard down by looting and little did I know this Vex was waiting and watching me and probably smelling me too. And this dude did so much damage to me so I had to use a golden apple because they could easily three tap me if they wanted to. And as soon as he came, he was gone. And I had no clue where he had went. That is, until I saw him just kind of looming around in the sky far away from the tower. What a guy. A classic hit and run. You better have insurance. But anyways, all was good because I had fully looted the tower and I stole the gold and another waypoint off of the roof to add to my collection. And while I was up here, I began searching for my next target until I saw this massive building hanging out in the distance that I absolutely needed to see. However, first I had to go back down and check out that other structure next door. And huge surprise, it was just a rock. A big, beautiful rock. One that had nothing in the center but more rock. If this was a Tootsie Pop, that owl would be mad disappointed. So with that structure being a letdown, I went back up to the top of the battle tower to see where I had to go to get to that house. And while I was on my way there, I stopped by yet another super cozy shack, and I kinda roughed it up a bit, my bad. I may have also spent the night here by placing another waystone. On day 18, I traveled over to where the castle was, and I was met with an entire castle full of nope and more nope. And to top all of that nope off, Frostmaw was chillin' next door. It was safe to say that I stood zero chance down there, but I could at least come back here in the future, so I placed out a waypoint, and I named it Frostmaw and Death Castle, or something like that. I mean, that's probably accurate though. Honestly though, if you think about it, I should've called it like Pain Plaza or something. I just came up with that in post. It's way more clever and funny. Anyways, after saving that place for later, I traveled over to the snowy biome where I found some of Forge Lab's best friends. And they were just moosing around in the void. And I am so disappointed that sentence just came out of my mouth. Moving on. After leaving Forge's family behind, I found the perfect mountain full of exposed coal that of course the hoarder inside of me could not resist. And after most of my daylight was gone and I had broken through two of my pickaxes, I ended up with a solid three stacks plus eight extra coal. And then in the distance, I had seen perfection. There is this building that looked like it would be absolutely perfect to call my house. However, it was surrounded by gross icky snow, but I guess beggars can't be choosers for now. Plus, upon further inspection while I was looking out in the distance, there wasn't just one of those houses, but it looked like there was a second identical one 
over in the distance, just kind of hanging out in that spruce forest. So on the next day, day 19, I made my way over to the first one of these places and my mind literally imploded. This place was heaven. It had walls to block out any and all mobs. It had a farmland area with villagers and they were already equipped with five star amenities. There were beds, job blocks, and a chest with some wither roses inside. We even had our very own guards. And since I have name tags already, I could also give them totally stupid names when I wanted to. Anyways, there were two librarians here, and they both had some pretty pog enchantments. The first guy had an enchantment that stopped endermen from aggroing you when you look at them, and the second one had fire protection four. Plus, each enchantment had its own cool custom looking book that looked insane. I was sold on this place. This place was going to be my new home, or at least until I found one that wasn't covered in snow. So I placed down my waypoint and I named it Paintopia 2.0 Dominating. Don't know why I named it like that, but it was almost like this place was a sequel to a bad video game. After giving my brand new home a name, it was now time to explore the surrounding area. To the left, there was another building that was similar to this one that could come in pretty useful for some beautiful capitalism. So I first headed over to the building that was similar to my new home, and upon getting closer, something was off here. It was different and dark inside. And then they showed up. This place was full of invisible bowmen. I tried fighting them back in between blocks, but either I couldn't hit them or I was just bad at the block game. So I made the decision instead for a tactical retreat. I didn't want to loot you anyways. And honestly, with that place being a mess, I figured, you know, why not go and visit the next village over? And this place was ripe with future workers. I, I mean, friends, they're friends. So I went up to the waypoint and I named this place Village Hidden in Capitalism. And I am way more proud of that joke than I probably should be. On day 20, now that I explored the two nearby places and I was happy with my new house, I was ready to move on. So I spent this entire day teleporting back and forth, pulling around piles upon piles of loot that I had been hoarding back at my old base. And this process took all day until the sun went down when I finally finished and I picked up my remaining chests, my crafting bench, and my bed. And these villagers, they weren't good enough for me. So I left. And now that all of my loot was in my brand new castle of a house, I spent the rest of the night lighting up any random areas that might be dark enough for random mobs to spawn. On day 21, the very first thing that I decided to do was experiment with rerolling the fire protection for villager because I honestly wasn't sure if it was going to work in better Minecraft or not. But it did, and on top of that, after only three rerolls, this guy gave me a mending enchantment for a measly 12 emeralds, which was huge. So I went over and grabbed some emeralds and books from my chest, and I bought myself a juicy three limited edition copies of Mending. And of course, I trapped this guy in a block prison because he was now super valuable. And now that I had a new Mending friend, it was time for me to go back out exploring for some more loot because to be honest, Arlcraft had spoiled me with loot and I wanted more. Anyways, I left the snowy area and I found myself in a swamp full of pools of, um, you know what, never mind. And after leaving the swamp, I found yet another battle tower. And honestly, these things are too easy and the loot is way too subpar, but you know the drill. I ran up breaking any of the spawners and I stole all of the gold blocks and the waystone off of the top floor. And of course, I went down emptying each chest of their valuables and there wasn't really much that was new. However, I did get a couple of not that great enchanted books. So, I mean, I, I guess that's something, right? And speaking of something, let's just take a couple of minutes to look at the view from up here. Like, just look at that mountain over there with the trees on the sides of it. This mod pack just looks so damn good. On the 22nd day, I continued exploring until I found probably the best thing in this entire mod pack. That's right, Moo Bloom, my beloved. Just look at what Dream stole from us. Rip, Moo Bloom, you will be missed. Anyways, I unfortunately had to leave behind my beloved, and I then found myself in the middle of a field full of more structures to loot. And first up on my list was yet another basic battle tower where the battle part was apparently available for $9.99 in the better Minecraft EA store. Because once again, there was like zero mobs and there wasn't much battle to this battle tower. But after all, I did still steal all of the gold on the top, and I got myself another waystone and some more pretty run-of-the-mill loot. And after this, I found this cool pit of probably death. Nope. I continued on through this field while beating on some crunchy cows for their meat and leather. That's an interesting sentence. And then I saw it in the distance. Just look at that massive, awesome tower. 
and to the left of it was yet another one of those massive pillager castles. And to its right was a brand new village with another baby tower behind it. There were so many choices, too many choices. So the first thing that I did was visit the nearby village and there wasn't really much going on here, but I did something a little quirky and relatable by robbing all of them of their food. And not long after that, while looking through villager houses, I stumbled upon a low-key gold mine. Because this chest had three free ender pearls. Anyways, at this point the sun was going down, so before I teleported back home to dump more loot, I checked out this nearby gatekeeper's house, and at this point something clicked inside of my massive brain. Inside of all of these dudes' houses, there were these blocks that looked like they could have been portals. And I was thinking, nah, that's not a portal. But in this place, it was, it was pretty obvious. So maybe in the future I can figure out how to light it up and go through whatever portal this was. That is until I realized something else even more massive brain. Each gatekeeper had a trade for something called a zeal lighter for 8 emeralds. And that might just be what I need. Except I was now emerald poor because I bought all those mending books. So instead of doing that, I ended up going back home for the night, and I organized all of my stuff back into my dump chest, so that way I could loot more the next day. And on day 23, I teleported back to the village, and I began heading towards that massive structure, and as I got closer, I noticed this very ominous lack of an entrance downstairs. So I began digging a hallway through, and I was starting to think that there was nothing inside of here, and it was all just for show, until I hit this super dark dungeon in the middle. And inside, there were these super beefy wither skeletons that had spider mob heads on. It kind of feels like this place was inspired by Hypixel Skyblock, not gonna lie. But anyways, now that I was here, it was going to take a lot for me to leave because I smell actual good loot inside. So I used my new vantage point to smack up these super resistance guys and none of them hit me, but to be honest, it kind of felt like if they did, they would one shot me. So I was being very careful to get away from them. And after I cleaned up the horde that was spawning, I built my way over to their spawner and I broke it. And now that things were a little safer, I looted the nearby chest and the loot wasn't that great, but after all, this was only the first floor, so I didn't really expect all too much. And after looting the chest, I saw a nearby spider spawner that I began building over to until this mega flash spider sped his way into my face. These guys were insanely fast, but not faster than their own mortality, because I ran over in the dark and I control alt deleted their spawner so I wouldn't have to deal with any more of them. Hopefully not foreshadowing. It's foreshadowing. Anyways, after finishing off the spider spawner, I searched the ground for any drops because these guys were holding diamond swords after all. And holy mother of loot, one of them dropped a half durable sharpness to diamond sword, which was busted. Goaded, some may even say. It was safe to say that I was very excited about this drop, although I was also a little more scared now to get hit by any of those guys because they all had sharpness too. And I had learned that all of those spiders were one-shot kills even with an iron sword, so all I had to worry about now was the poison. And after this, I ended up getting a little ballsy and I ran into each spider room nearby and I quickly broke the spawners before wiping out the spiders. And while here, I began smacking this regular spider like four times until I realized something. These guys had 70 freaking health. This was only the bottom floor. How much worse were things going to get? At this point, thoughts of just how bad the top floor could end up being were quickly flooding my head. But that wasn't enough to stop me because I continued slowly chipping away at the spiders for the rest of day 23 and most of the next day, day 24. And while I was here I found this little goblin trader guy who ended up having busted overpowered trades. I mean at least they would be busted overpowered if I was rich but I'm not. It turns out that these guys could be used to get crazy enchanted pickaxes that I don't think you can get otherwise. Plus I could now trade basic cobble for emeralds. So in the hopes that he wouldn't despawn, I trapped him in a hole so that way I could go back home and get a name tag for him. So on day 25, I teleported back to the dungeon tower from my base with the brand new waypoint that I had placed and I gave this guy the very rightful name Gojo because his trades are mega overpowered. Let me know in the comments if you know which anime is that from, by the way. Anyways, though, while I was back here, I attempted to finish off the full floor. I quickly ran back into the spider area, and there were no more spawners, but I did find a chest while lighting up the area, and there wasn't really much here. However, I did find a protection for a pair of chainmail boots in my inventory. And after lighting up the area, I saw yet another spawner that I quickly ran up and broke, and I made my way to the final room. And there was something walking around on the freaking ceiling. 
They kept shooting me with a bow and I had zero way to do anything about him. So I went back to my base and I got myself a bow and some arrows and I came back ready to 1v1 this boy off of the ceiling. And just like my daddy was gone. Jokes on him though, I didn't want to 360 no scope him anyways. And now that he was gone, I headed up the ladder and apparently this was how you get to the other floors. And now that I was on the next floor, I quickly ran in and I blocked off every single side and I went around lighting up the area with safety torches that you could in fact put on your porch. I then spent the rest of the day smacking around these guys and expanding the safe territory of this floor and the chests still weren't too insane, but they were definitely getting better. Plus I now had an enchantment table and two of those withers ended up dropping their skulls. On day 26, I finished off the wither portion of this floor and I was fighting off more spiders and apparently creepers. That is until I finally had a prime opportunity to run in and delete the spawner before the mobs in the other rune caught on. I then cleaned up the remaining spiders and I quickly blocked off the rain of arrows that they had spammed at me and now I was safe to loot this room. Things were getting better and better because this place was full of coal blocks. And of course, I also found a chest that had some more coal and similar loot to the first floor. And now there was only one room left to fight and it was full of anti-gravity bow boys that did way too much damage for their own good. So instead of sitting here unloading the 10 arrows that it took to destroy them into their ugly faces, I instead cheesed it by covering myself up with blocks and I went over and broke their spawner and I stole the loot from their chest. See you later suckers. At this point I had finished the second floor, however my inventory was full, so I was going back to my base, until on the way down I noticed a second goblin just kinda chilling here. And this man had the same enchantment offers, but for an axe and a shovel. So I might as well just keep him here too, I mean, why not? And after running to my base and back, I gave him the name Bakugo because of his explosive personality. Get it? And at this point, all of my armor and tools were looking pretty rough, and I'm sure this place was only going to get harder. So instead of going up there and dying, I instead went back home to fix everything up. And at this point, it was now day 27, and upon getting home, my massive five head brain was going burr. Today, I wasn't going to make more iron armor because I wanted diamond. So I broke my conveniently now trapped cleric's job block and I smelted myself some smooth stone and I gave him a blast furnace so he would become an armorer. And as you guessed it by now, I had plenty of coal and iron to level this guy up. And in no time, he had diamond leggings and boots with some pretty garbo enchantments. And I was going to trade with him, but he was now stuck in bed and refused to get up. Honestly, relatable. So instead of trading, I spent the night sleeping like a peasant. On day 28, I woke up ready for some diamondes and capitalism. So I ran over to my friend and I bought the leggings and boots and in order for me to get enough emeralds for the other armor, I had to level him up and burn through so much iron and coal. But overall, it paid off pretty well because he gave me a prot 2 chest piece, which is honestly god tier in comparison to everything else, and he had a diamond helmet. Let's not talk about the enchantment. Anyways, I was now a man with full diamond armor. Plus, I already had mending that I could add to everything. However, now I was in need of the coveted protection for if I was going to stand any chance in a place like that. So I began re-rolling my other librarian, and after only a couple of rolls, I got an enchantment called Tinted that piqued my interest. With it, I could apparently dye the color of my armor glow when it's enchanted. So of course, I had to go into a creative world just to test this thing out. And it turns out, either purple doesn't work, or it's just the default color. Either way, the yellow looked Pretty cool, but honestly, not cool enough to sell me on this enchantment. Maybe in the future though. So I blocked my guy in and continued re-rolling until I got an enchantment with a special rare looking color called Yatagarasu that apparently teleports you behind an enemy that you attacked, which sounds super fun, but probably awful, right? Well, I didn't really know, and I really wanted to see just how this worked, so it was back to that creative world where I enchanted a sword, and I tested it out on a ship full of pirates, and, um, it did nothing. The sword did nothing. Moving on. So I went back to re-rolling him throughout the night until he refused to keep changing jobs. But, hey, at least a lot of the new enchantments were really cool, right? For day 29, I spent the entire day just re-rolling and re-rolling and, big surprise, more re-rolling. This guy had zero interest in cooperating with me. During this, I had to pass up on so many good enchants too that it was killing me inside. I passed up on Silk Touch, Feather Falling 4, Infinity, and even Protection 3 because it might end up a little pricey. But at this point, I was thinking that I had made a mistake. 
Crazy, right? I, I don't really do those. Anyways, at this point it became become nighttime, and the dude stopped cooperating at all, so I was forced to once again sleep so he would go back to being as equally unhelpful as he was today. On day 30, it was back to re-rolling, and as an insult, he gave me protection one right off the bat. For a terrible price. And his friend also broke in again to help with this rebellion. Thanks guys, you'll love to see it. Overall, this process was terrible. I did this until the end of day 31. That's right, it took me pretty much four days of me re-rolling to try to get this enchantment. At this point, I had become desperate and I figured I should just settle for a protection to enchantment. I definitely regret not jumping on the protection three in retrospect now. But I guess this horror show was over for now. And after this, I used my very limited emeralds to buy one book and I combined it with my chest piece to give it protection three and breaking two. I was finally moving up in the world. Even though protection four armor is far from god armor in this mod pack, but you know what? Stop reminding me. Don't wanna talk about it. On day 32, now that I had the protection villager, I needed a way to actually buy the enchantments. So of course, I grabbed a fletching table and I made the last available villager that I had into a stick boy so I could do some classic capitalism with him for all of the juicy emeralds that I could ever imagine. I then used all of the wood that I had to make sticks and I traded them with him for just enough emeralds to buy another protection book. However, at this point, I was now both emerald poor and stick poor. So I spent the rest of this day slowly hacking away at some baby spruce trees in the nearby forest until the sun went down and at that point I could buy a second book and combine it with my chest piece to give it protection for. However at this point my stick trader stopped putting up with me scamming him so once again I had to go to sleep for the day. So on the next day, day 33, I began by buying another sharpness book and I combined it with the first and mending and I added them to my chest piece for a sweet protection for I'm breaking two and mending chess piece. And at this point, I was pretty much stuck with the enchantments that I had, but that's okay because I was now ready to go back and see just how much damage I could now do and how many hits that I could take. So I quickly made my way back to the dungeon and up to the third floor where I ran in and took out two of these spiders while sustaining practically zero damage. Things were looking insane. I then quickly deleted the spawner and the very first chest had four emeralds inside, which wasn't much, but at this point, I will take anything that I can get. I continued through this floor by slowly clearing out areas and breaking spawners, and I even ended up getting a second Sharpness 2 Diamond Sword to spawn that was almost brand new. I kept clearing out more areas until I ran into a room full of those invisible roof skeleton jerks, and they all still did a ton of damage. I used a bunch of blocks up above me as cover, and I managed to break both their spawner and steal more emeralds from their chest to fuel my enchanting quest. I then spent most of my night here until I couldn't get past those archer jerks without having arrows. So I ended up going back home defeated and I traded for some more emeralds until I could buy three more protection two books that I could almost use for one more protection four piece of armor. And after that, I combined the two swords for an extra half a heart of damage and I named it the Simp Slayer. And after that, I gave my new sword friend my looting three book in the hopes of getting even more swords that I could use to eventually combine for a sweet sharpness five. On day 34th, my brand new Simp Slaying sword by my side, I was ready to take on the world. I headed back to the dungeon and I made my way up to the fourth floor where I was absolutely slaying through mans. With my protection for armor chest piece, I took so much less damage and I still haven't even been hit by one of those wither skeletons. Anyways, now that I had a looting three, I could now get so much more from these guys. And right as I was thinking about that, another fresh diamond sword popped out of this dude. Weird sentence, I know. After getting the diamond sword, I continued through this floor while getting mad strain drops from the spiders that I could also use to trade for my Fletcher for some more emeralds. And just like that, floor four was done. Apparently, I was getting way faster at this. I entered floor 5 and I quickly began cleaning up each area until I ran into this massive pile of creepers, wither skeletons, spiders, and more ceiling jerks. So I did a pro gamer move by running ahead and breaking some of the other spawners that were contributing to this problem. And then one of the skeletons had dropped another diamond sword during the process, but I had to struggle to run in and get it because apparently all of the archers now had knockback 69. However, I still got that sword and apparently I also scored a bonus wither skull. It was safe to say that I was making massive progress, and overall I was here until the end of day 35. 
On day 36, by the time I had gotten home, it was already midday, and I had a lot of stuff to do. I first dumped out my inventory so I could keep my sanity in check, and I began placing out all of my cobwebs to break them for some more string. And by the time I was done, and I had traded all of them for emeralds, I now had 27 more, that I then used to buy two more Protection 2 books that I added to my collection. And to end this short day with a bang, I combined my two diamond swords that I had gotten to make another Sharpness 3, and I gave it to the good old Simp Slayer, so he was now able to defeat even tier 3 subs on Twitch with his sharpness for goodness. And now that my sword was ready to go for the next day, I was going to go to sleep until similar to real life, my brain wouldn't stop. So I decided, you know, why not go through my chest to see exactly what I've gotten so far. So I grabbed all of my gold and I combined them into almost a stack of gold blocks. And then I saw my half stack of apples and I had an idea. So I teleported back to the dungeon. And I went over to my little goblin friends and I traded all of those apples with the two of them that definitely don't despawn when they have name tags. Anyways, though, I now had 32 more emeralds. So I went back to my protection guy and his trades were getting cheaper and cheaper because because I bought so much from the other villagers, including him. So I bought a bunch more books until he leveled up, and he didn't really get any good enchantments, but now I could sell him books for emeralds. And if you haven't noticed, that entire dungeon was full of books. Those wither skeletons were looking like nerds. So now that I had a bunch more protection books, I put them all in the chest, and I had figured out that I only needed two more of them to make myself a full set of protection for armor. On day 37, I headed back to the dungeon to borrow any and all books that were in sight until my axe had broken. So I headed back to Paintopia to get the remaining emeralds that I needed for that full set of protection for armor, and of course, my librarian was refusing to buy any and all books. It's almost like being trapped in a box and forced to buy anything I give him was a bad thing. How ungrateful, am I right? Anyways, though, after gaslighting the protection guy, I kind of just spent today chilling around the base and constantly checking if his trades refreshed because at this point, I was very, very ready for protection for armor. And overall, I only had to wait about 5 minutes, but I am extremely impatient, so it felt like eons. But he had finally refreshed his trades, and he upped his price because I may have flooded the marketplace. But that was fine, because I basically had an endless supply of books, so I bought the remaining 2 protection 2 books that I needed. And after trading some more coal with my armor for the 4 remaining emeralds, I began combining them all into protection 3 books. That is, until I ran out of XP. I now had all of the books that I needed for the maximum diamond quality armor, and I was now poor XP wise. So I guess it was time to go back to the tower dungeon for me so I could squeeze the levels out of anyone who dared to oppose me. And right before I teleported there, a blue lucky moon begun. And boy was tonight super lucky. Because as I was doing floor 8, I think, at this point I lost track. Anyways, I had gotten a potion of luck to drop and an additional wither skull, which I guess in hindsight might actually not be that lucky, considering that I had looting three and I had taken out a lot of the skeletons, but don't ruin this for me, let me have my moment. For all of day 38, I kept successfully pushing through floors and farming as much XP as I could until I hit about level 21, which was technically all I needed for now. I wanted to waste as little XP as I could, so I headed back home and I spent the rest of the night piecing things together. I bought a brand new helmet because mine was already half broken from all of those ceiling jerks shooting me in the face. Thanks for that, by the way. And I crafted a grindstone so I could disenchant it for fresh enchantments. Then I combined two of my sets of Prot 3 books to make two protection fours. And I added mending to the very first one so I could put it on my helmet, except I was now out of XP again. Maybe this mod was a lot more like Arlcraft after all. Anyway, since I now had a grindstone, I had an idea for some more free XP. So I went through all of my chests in search of any enchanted items that I could find that I didn't need. And I grinded all of them up for a sweet 15 levels that I then used to give that brand new helmet protection for and mending. And just like that, half of my armor was now protection for. Plus, I no longer have to worry about my helmet being, you know, shot to pieces. So I guess that was good. Now that I was even beefier, I spent the next three days, days 39 through 41, back inside of the dungeon, 
pushing from floor to floor, and with two pieces of protection for it, I could do so much more. At this point, even those ceiling skeletons could not stop me now. I was on a mission to finally complete this place, and things were going great. By the time it was day 40, I had enough XP to go back home and make a pair of protection for and mending leggings that I quickly put on before I headed back to loot the remaining floors. And while looting these remaining floors, there wasn't really much more inside of the chests. However, I did end up getting two more sharpness to diamond swords to drop. And then at the end of day 41, while climbing yet another floor, I finally saw it, the night sky. I had reached the final floor of the dungeon, and I was really getting boss vibes. That is, until I saw this gorgeous looking room with a couple of poorly placed spawners that didn't really do anything, and on top of that there was a ton of double chests that all had the same exact loot as pretty much all of the other floors. Honestly, I would be more disappointed at this place if it didn't give me a ton of emeralds, gold, bamboo, coal, bones, and other random useful stuff. So overall, this was a mission success. And I might actually come back here and steal all of these gorgeous lanterns and glowstone in the future. Or I could even end up making this place a base. But honestly, probably not because it would be way too much work to make it spawn proof. Anyways, now that I was finally done, I watched the conveniently placed sunrise. And as Cinema Sins would say, roll credits. On the 42nd day, now that I had finished off the dungeon for good and looted everything, I teleported back to my base to dump off the massive piles of loot that I had, and I was now up to a sweet 71 emeralds from just the last two floors alone. So I used all of this new money to buy myself another mending book and a pair of diamond boots, and I combined them all to make myself my last piece protection for in mending armor. And do you know what I was ready to go and do now? If you guessed go and take on one of those pillager castles, you would be very very, very right. I'm coming for those totems of undying. So now that I was done with that dungeon, I teleported back there to pick up two of the three waypoints that I had used as checkpoints. And while I was in here, I ended up finding a couple of chest rooms that I had skipped by accident, and they were all full of ceiling skeletons. Anyways, by the time I got back to the roof, it was already sundown, but that didn't stop me from doing a classic Assassin's Creed dive all the way down into the nearby river. And after this, I spent the entire night fighting this nearby bandit camp full of pillagers to test out just how powerful I became. And out of all of the chests that I looted here, I basically got nothing. These guys were a bunch of broke boys. However, for some reason, there were still so many of them and they kept spawning, but that wasn't going to stop me because I was now so much stronger than they could even imagine. On day 43, as the sun came up, I made my way over to the nearby pillager castle because I was beyond ready for those totems of undying. In the literal second that I got anywhere near the place, these boys began absolutely flooding out of the place. And honestly, just, just look at the footage. The footage will speak for itself. Look at how many of them there are, look at all the arrows they shoot, and look at all the arrows all over the place. However, even with all of these guys that were insanely cracked, I was still standing strong, taking basically no damage and one by one i ended up picking off each of them until things were quiet or at least for now i mean just look at this battlefield though do you see all of those arrows insane anyways now that things were kind of safe i broke into the side of the castle in the hopes that a bunch of them would come piling in and i could pick them all off and that's exactly what happened this place was full to the brim of boyos that is, until they all started breaking out, and I was hit by the dump trucks that they call the Vindicator. Or as I would like to call them, axe holes. <laughs> Get it? I'm sorry, that was bad. Anyways, I spent the rest of this day picking off illusioners who blinded me for way too long, may I add, and any other easy targets from the outside of the castle. And I may have managed to deviously lick one of the easier chests on the outside of the castle, and let's just say the loot from here was going to be hella good. Inside of this easy access chest alone, I got an enchanted diamond helmet and two free diamonds along with a ton more gold. After this, I kept fighting as many enemies as I could through the night until some illusioners started hardcore bamboozling me and it was now raining. So I quickly ran back to the nearby waypoint and I teleported home because that was a lot to manage. And it's safe to say that at this point, I really needed Unbreaking 3 for my armor because, I mean, just look at my helmet, man. It has mending and it's already half broken. On day 44, I teleported back to the castle and I began my siege by digging into part of the bottom floor and absolutely wrecking those boys' KD ratio. And honestly, everything was going pretty well. I was nice and safe inside of this room while comfortably picking off the bow boys and axe holes. Clever name, I know. That is, until the Sky Demon Nation attacked. Somewhere inside of this pile of mans, there was an evoker that had begun summoning their simp 
army. So I went into defense mode. I ran back outside to get enough distance so they would stop spawning Vex, but for some reason, more and more and more of them just kept pouring out and they were melting through my helmet. And then I saw him. There was a second evoker summoning tons of these aimbotting sky demons. So one by one, I broke parts of the wall so I could let out the evokers and target them. And after the first one came out into the open, I ferociously sniped him down in his prime. And he had dropped me my very first totem of undying that I very quickly ran up to and I swapped it with my shield. And after that, I continued dealing with these monsters while desperately trying to break out the second evoker and after he was finally free i took my shot and just like that cringy tiktok trend i never miss yeah can't believe i just said that I need to wash my mouth out with soap after saying that anyways after this clown was down i ran up to take his totem and i noticed that mine was now missing from my offhand however i didn't die so i checked my inventory and i noticed there was like a bobble type menu and apparently totems of undying count as a charm and they can go inside of this charm slot which means i could now still still use my shield while also equipping a totem, which was super pog. Either way though, I count today as a huge success. I weakened their forces and I got a bunch of diamond armor and loot from the only chest that I managed to actually get to. However, at this point, my helmet was down to 5% durability, which was rough. So I went back home and I grindstoned a bunch of my enchanted items for just enough XP and I combined my helmet with a new one because I still was desperately in need of unbreaking three. For day 45, I collected all of my current emeralds, I made two lecterns, and I headed back to old Paintopia so I could reroll a villager that I 100% didn't trap in the hopes of getting unbreaking, and this was honestly super insulting. After a few rerolls, he gave me protection four, and for only 33 emeralds. And let me tell you, I really really wanted to keep it, but technically I didn't need it, and it still kind of kills me inside. Why? So anyways, I kept re-rolling him, and shortly after that, he gave me Sharpness 4, which is another thing that I really wanted, but I didn't need yet. And at this point, I realized this guy was playing games with my head. So I kept re-rolling him until finally he gave me something else that I honestly couldn't resist. He offered me Infinity, and I didn't really have that many arrows for my bows, so I caved in, and I bought it, and I came back the next day, day 46, and began trading with another villager all day long. And out of all of the rerolls that this man had given me, the only thing that ended up being interesting was Fortune 2, but this time I was staying strong. I did not cave. So I kept rerolling him until the sun had set and he kept going to sleep every time I gave him a new job. And finally, I had gotten Unbreaking. And yeah, it, it was it was Unbreaking 3, totally, not Unbreaking 1. But honestly, I was very desperate and very unlucky. And for only 9 emeralds, honestly, it wasn't that bad. Overall, it would end up costing me about 36 emeralds to get Unbreaking 3. And unfortunately, I had to waste some XP for that as well, but it is what it is. So I bought as many books as I could, which ended up being a measly 6. On the next day, day 47, I went back to my house and I spent a lot of the day desperately scrounging for enough XP to craft these books into Unbreaking 3. I traded some string, some sticks, and some iron and books with all of my villagers to get enough XP. And in the process, I almost fully mended all of my gear. And after that, that, I crafted the books together for a nice unbreaking three and it was only going to cost me 37 whole levels to add it to my helmet because I had previously repaired it. At this point I was just better off making a new one and that was going to be my new plan. So at this point I was ready to head back to the death castle and hopefully I erased all of the evokers that they had up their sleeves so that way no vex were coming for these cheeks. And upon getting back there I was immediately jumped by a bunch more vindicators that I don't know why but they just do ridiculous damage. So while running away from them, I one by one picked them off until I built up and outsmarted the remaining smooth brains. And now that the outside was finally safe, at least I hope, I went inside and let me tell you now, the loot in here is absolutely broken. I spent the rest of the night checking each room, lighting them up, and looting all of these crazy chests that were full of diamonds, gold, iron, and crazy enchanted armors, including diamond. So I placed my remaining waystone inside the library and I went back home to check on my stacks and overall, this is everything that I got from just the bottom area. I ended up with 9 diamonds, 11 gold blocks, 14 iron blocks, plus a ton of other loot and XP from all of this enchanted stuff. Overall, today was a good haul. On day 48, I fast traveled back to the inside of the castle and I spent the entire day building my way around the lower floors in the safest way possible because during the entire time I was here, all I could hear was a horde of vindicators following me by my 
every move above me, which was pretty terrifying. However, that was not enough to stop me from control alt deleting any of them that had jumped down to get me. And each of these chests that I had found at this were full of even more busted overpowered loot. My inventory could not handle all of this dank loot. After finishing the inside rooms, I made my way to the last part of the bottom floor that was kind of this little outside area. And then I saw it. There was a whole horde of guys outside of the base that was beyond scary. If I was out there, that was enough to easily kill me. However, because of my massive throbbing brain, instead I broke one of the iron bars and I just kind of sat here sending them all to the doom dimension one by one. And my beautiful looting three sword turned them all into a bunch of juicy emeralds. And now that things were more safe, I had access to a bunch more chests. However, at this point my inventory was once again full, so it was back to my base to dump said loot. I mean, just look at all of this enchanted stuff inside of this chest. I even ended up getting Feather Falling 4. And to top it all off, I now had 25 Diamondes. I was living like Larry. On day 49, I started out my day by giving my bow infinity because I was pretty much out of arrows and I desperately needed it. And after that, I noticed that my sword was looking a little not so great. So I sacrificed all of my new enchanted items for their XP and I repaired it. Man, am I not at all in a good place XP wise right now. But for now, I was just going to have to deal with it. So I was ready to go back to the castle. And let me tell you now, I thought that the worst was behind me at this point because I had already taken out the evokers and everything was going to be fine, right? Well, um, no, it was the complete opposite. I finished stuffing all of the loot from the bottom floors into my inventory and I began making my way up the middle of the tower. And there was a room full of evokers, illusioners, and everything else that Satan thought would be a good match for me. And honestly, things still weren't that bad yet. It was pretty rough, but I did clean up the room enough and I hunted down not one, but both of those evokers and I cleaned up all of their vex and things were going to get better now, right? There was a bunch more chests and each of them had more crazy loot. So things were looking really good. That is until I made my way up this final set of stairs and I ran into another set of evokers and illusioners that gave me the most terrifying experience I think I've ever had in Minecraft. That is other than Arlcraft. These guys were chasing me down and absolutely obliterating my shield, my helmet, and most importantly, my health. They got me down to two hearts and a Vindicator was still chasing me down. And if I didn't have absorption of the golden apple, this jump would have killed me. But I was on half a heart and the terror was far from over because there was probably more than 50 or so Vex that all wanted my gamer butt cheeks and they would not stop. I desperately parkoured my way around the ground terrain of the castle until I finally got back to my waypoint and I fled. And honestly, with the way my armor is now, I don't know how much more of that place I was going to be able to fight against. I knew it was going to be hard, but not that hard. And yes, that is what she said. So anyways, overall, I now had an additional four totems of undying, and this whole incident took me until the end of day 52. For day 53, I kind of just spent the entire day doing random small things that I could to give me some XP so I could begin repairing my armor. I started off by fast traveling to the Too Much Loot Village, and I spent most of my daylight just mining coal for some basic XP that wasn't going to try to kill me. I mean, it was also kind of a win-win because I could then trade that coal for more XP and for for emeralds with my villagers. I continued doing this until the sun set and I tried running around and killing mobs for XP. However, they ended up giving me less than the coal, which was honestly kind of sad. So instead, I went back home for the night and I grinded all of my gear for XP and I mass traded with my different villagers until all four pieces of my armor were fully fixed. And now I needed enough XP for Unbreaking 3, which you probably guessed is going to be a ton. But hey, good news is I leveled up my Mending Book guy and his new enchantments were completely useless to me. Nice. On day 54, I had an idea of how to grind for more XP with the current resources that I had. So I teleported back to the Loot Village waypoint and I made my way over to the nearby battle tower that I had left like 20 years ago. I quickly ran up each floor, except this time I lit up each of the spawners because I was now going to try to turn this place into some jank looking mob farm. And yes, of course, I broke the disgusting Vex spawner up top because ew, Vex are bad. And now that everything was in place, I went down and looted all of the chests and I slowly broke away each and every one of the floors inside while also blocking off the windows. So this whole tower would become a dark drop pit. And this process took until about day 57 where things were going pretty well. At this point, I had built the bottom killing chamber and I was beginning to place the water to push the mobs into the center and then a blood moon spawned. And the mobs that I was seeing in the distance looked awful 
to deal with. But since none of them were spawning near me, I kind of just kept working. That is, until a pile of creepers were trying to jump me, and honestly, I didn't want them to blow up my new spawners. So I quickly fled home, dodging all of the death, 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 and whatever that wizard-looking thing was that was alakazamming that iron golem into the sky. No thank you. Anyways, once I made my way home, I waited away the rest of the blood moon by watching the chaos unfold on those poor villagers in the spruce village next door. Sorry guys, but also kinda not sorry. On day 58, after the blood moon had vanished, I grabbed all of my buckets and I headed back to the mob grinder. And this time, I was ready to finish the place by placing the remaining water buckets that I needed, and then I took all of the torches off of each of the spawners, and this makeshift spawn tower was now fully operational. So I spent all of today and the next two days straight just grinding away at these spawns for some surprisingly very good XP. However, during this, the spiders didn't exactly work that well for this style of spawner, but honestly, beggars cannot be choosers. Overall, this spawner was going ham. Plus, with my looting sword, I also netted a ton of bones that I definitely didn't need, and more importantly, string for emeralds. But at this point, now that I was using my sword so much more, I also needed to fix it up because it was taking a beating. However, that was fine because the XP was really flowing, and apparently so were the music discs, even though there were no creepers. Weird. Anyways, by the time it was the night of day 60, I had enough XP to finally add Unbreaking 3 to my helmet. Goodbye XP because this was such a waste. And of course, I had to go through and name it a good old fashioned weeb reference, so I named it Moomin Rider. Let me know if you know which anime that's from down in the comments down below. Also, no googling. That's cheating. On day 61, now that my helmet had Unbreaking 3 and my XP was once again gone, it was back to that sweet mob grinder for some more XP. So this way I could fix up my sword and the rest of my armor. However, first my sword was definitely going to need some love before it breaks. So I traveled over to my original village and I bought as many Unbreaking 1 books as I could. Then I traveled back home and grabbed a mending book and some anvils. So this way I could upgrade as I went for maximum efficiency with levels. And now that I had those resources, I traveled back to the XP farm where I would slave away until all of my gear was busted. Or I guess the opposite of that if you think about it. Anyways, I began hacking away at skeletons and spiders while combining my unbreaking books together and adding the unbreaking three to my mending book. And now I was going to need an additional 27 more levels to add those to my sword. However, this was GG easy because this mob farm printed XP. So I quickly deleted enough piles of mobs to hit level 27 and I added the enchants to my boy here, Simp Slayer. And now that he could finally heal from all of the trauma that I've put him through, it's gonna suck trying to give him sharpness 5. Just saying that now. But all was good because I spent the rest of the night grinding away XP while also fixing good old Simp Slayer up. And on day 62, I went back to Paintopia for some more beautiful capitalism because my Unbreaking One Here guy owed me some books. And now that I had the rest of the Unbreaking that I would need for now, it was back to Lay XP Farm, where I grinded enough XP to combine all of my Unbreaking books into two Unbreaking 3 for my legs and boots, and one Unbreaking 2 book for my chest piece. And after only 11 XP, I combined my chest piece with the Unbreaking 2 book so it could reach its final form. And now I just needed enough XP to finish repairing my sword into Unbreakify, definitely a word, both my legs and my boots. So I spent the rest of day 62 all the way until the morning of day 63, just kind of AFKing in my platform that's high enough for the very top spawner to work and grinding out mad piles of mobs for enough XP to work on my armor. And let's just say that it might have been a pretty bad idea to AFK that long because a massive snowstorm began in the game and between the huge pile of mobs and all of that snow in the game, it definitely started chugging. But the XP that I got from this was enough to blow your mind. It was insane. I got enough XP to almost instantly fully repair my sword and I gave Unbreaking 3 to my leggings and my boots and my armor was now officially decked out and ready for those sussy evokers and vex. However, I wasn't done here because I had now amassed a chest full of enchanted bows and most of them had power too, which gave me a big brain idea. So I began combining different bows together until I got a power four and I'm breaking three bow and I was going to add it to my infinity bow. However, not before I got power 
5. And overall, this was a super expensive process that took until the end of day 64 when I finally combined the last two bows together to get Infinity, Power 5, and I'm breaking 3. And of course, I named this bow Shooty McShootface in honor of someone from Borderlands 2. If you know, you know. Anyways, now that my bow was done, it was not going to be fun to repair in the future because it costed 63 levels. Yikes. On day 65, I woke up with my brand new set of unbreaking gear, including my sword and bow, and I was feeling good. But at this point, I was missing something. I needed an ender chest. So I went over to my loot chest for some diamonds, and I crafted myself a basic diamond pickaxe, and I traveled back to the first dungeon that I had thought so I could steal one of the piles of obsidian. And while I was here breaking them, it turned out that each of these obsidian pile things had three free golden blocks inside stonks. So after stealing their gold and taking all of the obsidian, I walked out of here with about 28 obsidian and I smacked a couple of witches on the way out because for some reason they kept spawning in and one of them gave me a free three potions of luck for some odd reason. But you know what? I'll take it. Anyways, after heading back home, I made myself a nether portal downstairs because I was now in need of blaze rods if I wanted to make an ender chest, let alone go to the end. And after going through the portal, it felt like I was in another world because something was different. The biomes were different, there was a terrifying tentacle monster down below in the lava, and there were mobs everywhere. So, the first thing I did was take a shot at the tentacle monster down below because, you know, why not? And for some reason, he blew up. I guess that's just what happens when you bottle your emotions too much. I, I I wouldn't know that. Don't look at me. Anyways, those explody boys were not why I was here. So I began climbing up my way to this nearby set of nether bricks in the hopes that I had spawned directly next to a nether fortress. And while I was here, I noticed a casual pile of piglin brutes nearby that I wanted nothing to do with. So I continued digging up and huge surprise, this structure was a dud. Inside was a small room with the zombie piglin spawner that I honestly shouldn't have broken because I could have made a gold farm, but we all make mistakes, right? That is except for me, of course, obviously. On day 66, I kept exploring around, but there wasn't much else in this part of the nether, so I went back home so that way I could build myself another nether portal somewhere else. And the second I teleported back, I was ecstatic to see another blood moon had risen. So instead of sleeping away the night, I kind of just AFK'd the last of the night away while taking random pop shots at different mobs to kind of just see what they would do. And while I was doing this, one of them dropped me a free ice staff, which I probably will never use. Anyways, once the blood moon was finally over, I fast traveled back to Paintopia so I could build a new nether portal. And this time, I did not make it one too high like I always do. Don't know why I do that, it just happens. So after finishing the portal, I gave it a light and I went through and I spawned in this crazy ice biome that had snow magma that for some reason still hurt me. Overall, this biome was gorgeous. And what's that I see in the distance? If you guessed it, you are probably right. My very first nether fortress. Honestly, with waypoints, it is so much easier dealing with the nether. So I began making my way over there while placing some torches to make a path and I was stopped by a distraction. I found this small netherrack tower that was full of piglins and I saw some chests ripe for the robbing. So I whipped out Shooty McShootface and I deleted any and every pigman that I could that I saw guarding areas around the tower and I went down there to steal those chests. And to my surprise, downstairs area had some nether warts and soul sand. So now if I didn't find any in the nether fortress, I was still good to go. And after stealing that, I checked all of the chests and I got some of my very first nether scraps from these boys along with way too many enchanted items that I struggled to stuff into my inventory. Overall, I didn't do that much today, but it was still a mega successful day, so I headed back home to grindstone all of that armor and tools and to clean out my inventory. On day 67, I went back to the nether ready to take on whatever that fortress had in store for me. And the very first thing I got to see after building over was a wither skeleton with a bow. And honestly, those things... I'm so glad they're not in vanilla Minecraft because they suck. They managed to shoot you from a distance and still give you the withering effect. However, I did manage to take him out and he dropped me my very first wither school in this world. That was a sign that today was going to be great. And great it was because right after getting here, they immediately found a blaze spawner. And the guys practically printed blaze rods with Simp Slayer by my side here. It was looting three for the win and things were going GG easy. That is until he spawned. Apparently in this mod pack, all of the mobs from each of the past mob boats 
are in here. These guys were super cool, their animations were amazing, and if I wasn't decked out in full Prot 4 Diamond armor with a Golden Apple resistance, I'm sure he would make my life getting Blaze Rods a living hell. Anyways though, since all my armor and tools were good, I quickly took him out, and I ended up with 26 Blaze Rods, and it was safe to say that I was ready to go. So I placed down a waypoint so that way I can come here anytime I wanted for some more blaze rods and I headed back home for the day. And now that I was home and I had the blaze powder that I needed, I crafted some ender pearls into eyes of ender and I teleported back to the dungeon to get enough obsidian for some ender chests. Then while crafting the ender chest, I was thinking about how I needed silk touch in order to pick them back up until I thought about something that I had saved in my recipes from earlier when looking at backpacks. I could make a sewing table and use it to craft myself something called an ender backpack, which is honestly crazy. This thing is insane. It was like a portable ender chest that I only had to right click to access. So I placed down one of the other ender chests to test out if they connected to each other and they worked perfectly and I was absolutely stoked. Even though it didn't look like each time I opened this thing, it was going to cost me 1% of its durability. So it looks like they were only worth about 100 uses, which to be fair, in comparison to opening an ender chest, you know, placing it and breaking it every time, I can't really complain. I'll take it. That is, until the morning of day 68, I woke up with a genius idea of enchanting the backpack. So I grabbed a book of mending to test it out, and let's go, it freaking works! So I quickly teleported over to Paintopia, and I grabbed four Unbreaking 1 books for Unbreaking three and I headed back home and combined them all into one unbreaking three mending book which I didn't have enough XP to then add to the ender chest where I quickly gathered enough levels and I named the ender bag backpack backpack yeah don't look at me all disappointed like and now that it was enchanted I tried using it and it no longer took one percent durability plus I could now mend it in my offhand when grinding for XP which kind of feels weird but honestly I would be down for this to be in vanilla Minecraft because it makes almost no difference. Anyways though now that I have my backpack I was curious and I tried putting it into my backpack slot to save on storage and of course it didn't work. So I checked the crafting recipes of other backpacks and apparently I now needed tanned leather which is made by smelting bound leather which I then get by using a sewing table. So I gathered leather from my chests and I bound them, smelted them, and I crafted myself a white backpack because that was the only color wool that I actually had. And I added it to my backpack slot, which I had no clue how to use besides taking it off and opening it. But either way, I was a very happy guy because I was a hoarder, as I always say. Hoarder gang, rise up. On day 69, in honor of the lucky number and me finally being prepared to take on the rest of the pillager castle, I went back. And at first, things were pretty tame. That is, until I hit new territory. And there were still so many evokers, vindicators, and illusioners up here. But hey, at least I finally figured out how to properly kill illusioners, because not gonna lie, I had zero clue up until now. But that does not take away from the fact that today was terrifying. Because these evokers and vindicators still get me super low in health, and they melt through my armor durability. Honestly, without beacons, I don't think these castles are even worth taking on anymore. Even though I still get a ton of loot from it while I was here, it's a lot of loot and stuff that I low-key kind of don't need right now. Anyways, I continued on and I ended up finding an enchanting room with two chests of OP loot and of course I stole the enchantment table now that I had a diamond pickaxe. And not too far from this, I found myself a cluster of barrels full of insane loot that ended up putting my ender bag to the test. Overall, I wanted to defeat this place once and for all today, but after fighting and managing to kill one of the last two evokers up top, things were getting way too dicey because they both began piling up the sky demons and they were hitting like mini flying dump trucks and at this point without my golden apples i would probably be dead by now and i was quickly running out of them so i mlg water bucketed my way down the side of the building and i quickly fled back home for the night but don't worry because i may have lost this battle but i will be winning the war. So on day 70, I went out on an apple gathering mission in the fields near the Loot Waystone village so that way I could replenish my golden apples without trading with farmers. And I ran around these fields plucking red apples from trees for pretty much the entire day. And while I was out here, I also found a pillager outpost hidden away inside of this spruce forest. And they had a banner boy that I had zero interest in dealing with because I'm not really a huge fan of raids spawning in my base, you know? Anyways, by the time the day was over and the sun was going down, I had only gotten about 14 apples, which for a whole day of work is pretty trash, but you know what? I will take 
what I can get. So I went back home and I crafted all 14 of these apples into golden boys and I grabbed my one god apple to use as a trump card just in case that last evoker ended up being an anime antagonist. And on day 71, now that I was prepared, I traveled back to the castle and I made my way up to the top of the building and I broke in so I could take on the remaining enemies. And things went easy peasy just as planned. I quickly ran in and chased down what I thought was the final evoker, but it turned out that there was about four more of them, which I guess would really explain just how many Vex were spawning. But nonetheless, I defeated each and every one of them without taking that much damage. And now that I had finally defeated everyone in this entire castle, over the course of like one fourth of this video, may I add, I began searching for my winnings. And while I was looking around, I saw this purple wool that I decided to take so that way I could craft a purple backpack to match my channel colors. And it turns out that there was a hidden chest inside of it. And this chest didn't really have anything particularly crazy, but while I was organizing the loot into my inventory, a cave spider attacked me from above. And as you probably know, cave spiders don't really spawn without a spawner, and my loot senses were tingling. So I built my way up and there was an entire attic with some spawners and a ton of barrels. I quickly cleaned up all of the cave spiders with my bow and sword, and the chests broke my mind. There were so many of them, and they were all filled with stacks of gold, iron, diamonds, and crazy enchanted gear. Ironically though, I needed a good pickaxe and axe, and out of all the things inside of these chests, neither of those things were present. They gave me nothing but armor and no tools. Anyways though, after looting most of these chests, I very quickly ran out of inventory space in both my ender bag, my backpack, and my inventory, so I had to go back to the waypoint to dump my inventory. But either way, this place had a total of 37 diamonds inside of all the chests. That's right, just this attic area had 37 diamonds. It was very safe to say that I had things made golden. On day 72, after cleaning out my inventory, I headed back to the castle to climb back up and finish stealing all of my winnings from all of those epic battles. And somehow now there were two new evokers just kind of hanging out here. I have no clue where they came from, but just like the others, they were no longer welcome here, so I control alt deleted both of them. And I may have casually struggled cleaning up the vex that they spawned while wasting a lot of golden apples. I don't really want to talk about it. Anyways though, after that Christmas surprise was buried in the repressed memory section of my brain, I went back up to the attic and I looted the rest of what I wanted from all all of the barrels, while also stealing all of the hay bales, watermelons, and cobwebs for string, because I fought hard for this loot, damn it, and I'm going to take all of it. And now that this entire castle was fully looted and all of the mans were now memories, I climbed up to the roof to watch the sunset, and it was beautiful. But like all beautiful things in life, the sunset had to come to an end. So I climbed my way down and I headed back to the looting village, so that way I could take my castle waypoint home with me. And once I got home, these are what my huge loot chests and ended up looking like. Do you like what you see? Because I know I do. If you're proud of me for defeating that massive pile of craziness, don't forget to leave a like down below because I know I'm proud and just look at all of this gorgeous loot that I got. It's beautiful. On the next day, day 73, now that I had conquered both the massive wooden dungeon and the evil pillager castle, I was ready for my next big challenge. Today, I wanted to take on Frostmaw, but I wasn't quite sure if I was ready, so I tried taking a couple of pop shots at him, and like I figured, he was immune to arrows, so that way you can't cheese him. But that was okay, because that makes this battle a lot more fun and challenging. So I ate a golden apple for that super important resistance buff, and I made my way down the hill to take him on sword to fist combat style. And honestly, this battle was pretty intense, so cue epic music. And just like that, I had taken down Frostmaw, even before I had beaten the Ender Dragon. And he even dropped his ice weapon that I could use to freeze enemies in place, which would hopefully come in handy with all of those pillagers in the castle next door. Either way, this battle was the perfect amount of fun and challenging. And if you notice, I had a very close call when he slammed me down on the ground to three hearts. However, I still pulled through and we defeated our first boss. And as much as I now wanted to leave those pillagers alone and get a beacon before I came back, I of course, knowing me, 
sat here sniping them from the distance until a siege of Boboys poured out from the place, turning the battlefield into that scene from the movie 300. Anyways, after all of that chaos was finally over, I was wandering around the snowy plains looking for some Endermen so I could then find the stronghold next. However, something was kind of off. The game felt oddly laggy and no mobs seemed to be spawning until I was randomly yeeted off of a cliff like 20 blocks, which I of course didn't get in recording. And then all of the mobs just kind of started spawning. However, now my bow stopped working completely. Every time I shot it, it just kind of like went to the ground. And things kind of clicked now because back when I was shooting all of those pillagers, my bow shots didn't really make much sense. Sometimes they would overshoot and sometimes they would undershoot and not in the way that you normally would expect. So you know what? I kind of just figured tonight was not the night to go enderman hunting. On day 74, I started off the day by replacing my long gone friend, the iron axe, with this luscious and decadent diamond one. Only took 74 days to do that. Anyways, I didn't really know what to do today, but I know I wanted to get more loot. So I decided, since I was now super buff gamer boy with protection 4, that I would head over to that nearby castle that I tried about 20 days ago that had the invisible boys inside. And upon getting here, it turned out that there was actually nothing really here. Yep, no spawners, just a couple of chests with some free iron, some horse armor, and five much needed apples. Plus, I also got a free ender pearl, which honestly, I'll take it if I do want to go to the end after all. And now that I had finished exploring that disappointment of a building, I just kind of continued off into the snowy forest looking for something else interesting to do. And boy, did I find it. I ended up running into this witch looking mushroom house that didn't really seem like much until I discovered this whole mushroom village that was full of piglin brute spawners that looked like mushrooms. Kind of funny, honestly. While I was here, I thought about saving a couple of these spawners for the future farm or something, but instead I ended up breaking most of them because it kind I kinda of felt like it was gonna be too much effort. That is until I found a god spawner. This thing spawned in piglin brutes riding on cows. Which you may be thinking, you know, who cares? Well, first off, you'd be mean for thinking that. And second off, cows equals one of the most efficient sources of food. I would also like to point out in my notes there, I wrote one of the moist efficient sources of food. Pretty funny typo, not gonna lie. Anyways though, steak is god tier. And I could use this spawner to fully automate this into a steak farm in the future which would give me infinite and efficient food. Plus I could also turn it into like a makeshift XP farm if I wanted to deal with all of the piglins, which I probably don't. But anyways, I placed down my remaining waypoint and I named it Crime Against Cows because that's probably what was going to take place here in the future. And after claiming that place for some pretty unethical future plans, I continued exploring through the forest until I ran into another one of those cobble zombie dungeons, similar to the one that I explored earlier in the video when I was a lot less prepared. Anyways though, things were now different because I was a full diamond boy, so I made my way down to the main room and after blocking off all of the entrances, I actually decided to go down into the weird maze of catacombs below. And boy was I glad that I did not do this before because things down here were super hectic. There were spawners everywhere that spawned a ton of zombies, plus skeletons that had swords and axes, which did a pretty decent amount of damage even with diamond armor. And to make it all worse, there was ice everywhere from some weird ice mineshaft that kept melting every time I placed torches down next to them. And honestly, it just made my life so much harder while I was down here. That's okay, because coming down here was super profitable. And you know how we feel about profit around here. There were chests everywhere that had iron, gold, emeralds, apples, which I really needed, and freaking diamond tools inside of them, which is kind of also ironic because I basically no longer needed them. Overall though, I was down here until the end of day 77 and I had made out pretty well. I ended up with this entire pile of random loot which included one diamond, 17 more apples for golden apples, and three diamond axes, one diamond sword, and one diamond shovel. Overall, pretty poggers haul. And on day 78, after finally leaving that zombie catacomb area, it was conveniently nighttime, which was perfect for my next hunt, because I was still in need of some elusive endermen. So I spent the rest of this night running around in the cold, taking out any mobs that I could find, and unfortunately I only ended up finding one enderman, and he dropped one singular pearl. Which was okay, I guess, but 
you know what wasn't okay? Just how awful the snowy mobs are inside of this biome. There are ice skeletons everywhere that constantly kept giving me slowness. There are ice creepers that, to be honest, I don't really know what they do, but I don't really want to. And there are zombies that like to hit me with their balls. Weird sentence, I know. But at least there was some icing on this cake made of dung because ice soldiers were spawning here and they were easy peasy to yeet and they gave me free emeralds, which was a pretty nice addition to wasting my entire night inside of this field. So after taking out as many mobs as I could, I kept exploring around this area until the sun began to rise and I found a nice spruce village that I of course stole from. I mean, this wouldn't really be one of my videos without putting villagers in their place now, would it? So I first stole their waypoint that I could use in some place important if I found one, and then I found this lumberjack's chest that was way too OP for its own good. They were emeralds, iron, a heart of the sea, and two more diamonds. Man, villagers must love me or something. Not sure why though, I treat them like crap. On day 79, now that the sun was up and the roosters were sounding like dying monsters, yep, that's a thing, it was time for me to move on past this village and like 10 inches away, there was another one of those gatekeeper cottages that normally wouldn't be a big deal. However, today, I had enough emeralds on me to finally buy one of their zeal lighters so that way I could test out the portal inside of their house. And after buying the lighter, I headed up to his attic, another disturbing sentence may I add, and I right clicked the portal and it just kind of worked. It became something called an Everdon portal. So I placed down a waypoint that would lead me back here and I went through and once I got here, this place blew my mind. There was an entire other dimension that was all purple and the very first thing I noticed was this massive gorgeous looking building that I absolutely needed to explore. However, as I began making my way towards it, this hostile looking creature spawned in front of me and he ended up wanting a bite of my butt cheeks. So I hit him back with a good old simp slayer and apparently regular weapons do less damage to mobs here. So at this point I decided to do some quick research and it turns out that the blue book that I had bought a long time ago was actually super useful for telling me what was related to this dimension. Plus, it turns out that there were two dimensions. The first one is the dimension of eternal day, and this one was the dimension of eternal night. And it turns out that each of these dimensions have different dungeons with boss mobs inside. And that tower that I was looking at contains one of those boss mobs. However, I should probably find some of this dimension's ores first, so that way I can make some more effective weapons. So I went back through the portal and I teleported back to the village near my house, so that way I could steal their waypoint and use it as a checkpoint in the other dimension. And after that, I went back home as the sun went down and I began preparing for my journey. I first dumped out the ton of loot that I had found while in the catacombs into my chests, and I crafted all 17 of my new apples and two more golden ones just in case the fight goes south. And after this, I spent the rest of the night setting up my inventory so I would be ready to take on anything that this dimension could throw at me. Or at least, that's what I had thought. On the morning of day 80, I fast traveled back, went through the portal, and all I can say is pain. And not just because it's my name. Upon first walking up on the building, I tried placing a torch inside, and apparently you can't place blocks in here. Which was totally not an ominous sign in the slightest. So ignoring the fact that I couldn't place blocks, I began climbing up the spiral stairs while low-key losing my mind with fear, and the first enemy that I found ended up being this witch. That instead of shooting her from a distance with my bow like a smart big brain boy would do, I instead began smacking her, with my sword as any gentleman would, and after throwing only a couple of potions, she destroyed my health and popped my totem of undying. So it's safe to say that I was out of there. I quickly fled down the stairs and I went straight back into the portal, and just like your dad when he went out for milk, I was gone and I was not coming back. After getting back to the overworld, I went back to my house, and when putting on a new totem, I also realized that you could apparently wear two of them at the same time, which is kind of useful, not gonna lie. But yeah, either way, I was not going back there anytime soon because I needed to be much stronger to take on that. So with that failure beside me, the first thing that I began to do was craft myself a diamond shield to replace the iron one because this one blocked an additional 8% damage when blocking attacks. And now I was going to add enchantments to it. However, instead of re-rolling my villagers, I thought that it was finally time to make an enchanting area with one of those tables that I casually borrowed. So I went back to the previous dungeon that I had beaten and I spent the rest of the day and all of day 81 
stealing each and every bookshelf from every floor and while I was there collecting any remaining gold blocks inside of the centers of those obsidian piles and by the time I got home I now had almost 33 stacks of books which is very safe to say that it was mega overkill but I mean I could always trade them for emeralds so at the end of the day things still worked out pretty well. On day 82, now that I had a decent amount of books, or at least I would say, I crafted myself 21 fresh but never frozen bookshelves. And I built myself a brand new enchantment setup over in the corner where a bunch of those random bookshelves used to be. And now that I had an enchantment setup, the very first thing that I went to test out was enchanting my brand new diamond shield. And apparently you cannot enchant them like you could in Arlcraft, which honestly kind of sucks. So I did the next best thing instead and I grabbed one of my fresh diamond axes that I had looted from that dungeon and I had the option for either efficiency 4 or vein mining which gave me an idea. So I chose the efficiency 4 enchantment and I also got unbreaking 3 for free. However I just so happened to have a vein mining book inside of one of my chests that I added to it so that way I could test out mining trees. And you probably guessed it, but unfortunately, it does not work like the timber mod and ended up being a waste of an enchantment. Pog. But that was okay because I went back to my enchantment table to enchant my diamond pickaxe and this one only gave me efficiency 4, so I crafted myself another one and I grinded a bunch of iron enchanted gear for enough XP to enchant it at level 3. And this boy gave me silk touch, efficiency 4, and unbreaking 3, which was perfect. So I combined both of the picks into one and I gave them the totally not terrible name Pick Picture Perfect because it's Silk Touch, get it? It's funny, laugh at it, haha. <laughs> Anyways, it was now an Efficiency 5, Silk Touch, and Unbreaking 3 pickaxe. And now all I needed was Mending, so I grabbed the Mending books from my chests and I first added Mending to the pickaxe and after that I added Mending to the brand new axe that I then named Axeptional. Because at this point you could probably tell that my pun game was on point today. And if you disagree, you should leave a like on the video because YouTube removed dislikes so companies wouldn't get their feelings hurt while being ratioed. On the next day, day 83, I wanted to go out and get the remaining ender pearls that I was missing so that way I could not only beat the ender dragon but also explore the end a little before these 100 days were over. So I grabbed about half of the gold that I had and I went back to the nether to trade with piglins. And this process could not have gone worse to be honest. The first group of piglins just kept taking all of my gold without giving me anything in return and to add insult to injury they crafted themselves full gold armor without even trading anything. So I revoked their licenses to exist and after getting scammed out of my hard earned gold I moved on to this next guy who actually traded me stuff. He gave me real things in return for my gold. So I just kind of sat here collecting the loot that he had dropped and sorting through it until I noticed something just a little sus. Out of all of these trades he had dropped me zero pearls. So either I was just very super ultra unlucky, like anti-dream, or they just don't drop pearls in this mod pack, which really wouldn't make much sense. But either way, I was tired of wasting my gold, so I looked up ender pearls using the TMI mod, and I had forgotten that cleric villagers actually trade you them when they hit level 5. So instead of wasting my time on this, I went back through the portal and I spent until sunrise looking around my base for some more endermen and huge surprise, there are none. On day 84, I gathered my legally acquired brewing stands along with an inventory full of emeralds and books for some beautiful capitalism, which I know you all love so, so much. Can I get some capitalisms in the comments down below? The algorithm loves capitalism, literally. Anyways, I took all of those resources and I traveled back to Paintopia to find a brand new villager friend to become my new cleric. And once I had this guy already, I wasted tons and tons of emeralds for redstone, lapis, and glowstone, which to be honest, were all pretty useful, but I didn't really need them. And after doing these easy trades, he had leveled up enough to get ender pearls for five emeralds each, which I was only able to buy about seven of because I didn't really have enough emeralds. So I went back to my base and I mass traded for iron, books, and string with my villagers until I had enough emeralds to buy what I needed. And after trading with the cleric once more, I now had 19 more ender pearls. You can suck on these piglins. Anyways, once returning home again, I crafted some of the ender pearls into eyes of ender. And now I had 25 eyes of ender and nine spare ender pearls. 
for some of those MLGs while fighting the Ender Dragon. And now that I had one last thing that I needed to locate the stronghold, there were only a couple of loose ends that I needed to tie up in preparation to go to the end. And one of the very first things that I tried to do was add Sweeping Edge 3 and Fire Aspect 2 to Simp Slayer, which would end up costing me over 40 levels because of how inefficiently I had leveled up this weapon, which I guess wasn't that bad in comparison to how much it would cost me to put this End Veil enchantment on my helmet. It's only 67 levels. It's two levels below the funny number, which was still absurd. I guess I'll just have to deal with aggroing Enderman, to be honest. On day 85, since I couldn't upgrade my armor any further, there was one more thing that I needed before I would go to the end. I needed some more backpacks for some super efficient inventory management. So I spent all of today kind of just grinding away at my cow farm for some leather, and then binding that leather with string, tanning that bound leather by smelting it, and using whatever wool that I had to craft myself a total of five new backpacks and unfortunately only one of them was their channel color purple but at least during this day i also learned that isologers that spawn all around this area can also spawn with ominous banners on which was a pretty big hard pass for me no raids in my house thank you anyways i spent the rest of this day finishing my preparations to go stronghold hunting Plus, I could even put my new backpack collection inside of any future shulkers that I got, which would then go inside of my ender chest for some maximum insane portable storage once I found my first end city. On day 86, I woke up and while adding the finishing touches to my inventory, I ended up finding 50 more string inside of one of my chests. So I crafted three more backpacks for a total of eight and I threw them into my ender chest full of supplies. And after this, I set off in search of the stronghold by using my Eyes of Ender. And not too long into the search, I found a brand new pirate ship, and this time I was well prepared to RKO all of those jerks and yoink their loot. So I began by taking some perfectly aimed, amazing bow shots from the distance, if I do say so myself. And once enough of them were eliminated, I then moved in for the kill by digging my way into the bottom of the ship and once I was in, I began one by one sniping any of the remaining bow boys on top of the deck until I couldn't really see any more of them. And at this point, I said screw it and I broke through the blocks and I ran out as quickly as I could and I was chased off of the side of the boat by two very easy to drown vindicators. And speaking of easy to drown vindicators, now that they were slowly drifting down to Davy Jones locker, I used my water bucket to get back up the side of the boat and I built up and headshot all of the remaining vindicators until I got the chance to run into their dark spawning area and break their spawner, which would have probably made an amazing emerald farm, but I mean I could always find another ship in the future if I do end up continuing this series. Anyways, I spent the rest of the night looting all of the chests for loot and I ended up with two diamonds and a bunch of TNT and some more free gunpowder. On day 87, I started off the day by getting a little quirky and um, I, I stole all of the entire first mass of the ship with a pair of shears because hey, this wool was free real estate. It's free. Free real estate that I could use to make more backpacks. Everybody loves backpacks, am I right? So after finishing that daily dose of theft, I then jumped off of the boat and I swam over to the island that was further in the direction of the stronghold and I checked my inventory for the wool and I had gotten two and a half stacks of white wool and a measly purple, which was still pretty good, not gonna lie. Also for the people that like a little bit of math out there, that totaled out to about 56 brand new backpacks, which is pretty pog. Anyways, now that I was back on land, I continued using Eyes of Ender until I found myself two more ships in the distance that I was hoping I could visit, that is until the pearls started leading back into this super dense forest that made it pretty difficult to actually, you know, follow them. And then, while I was inside the forest, one of the pearls finally led straight into the ground. So, I dug straight down until I hit this little cave system, and finally, I had found the stone brick that I had been looking for. And let me tell you now, this place was a massive surprise. This place blew my mind. I've seen this mod in different mod packs before, but I've never actually played one that had it in it. In the stronghold, was fully decked out and massive, and this place was absolutely gorgeous. I began exploring around until I found the new library, and I was literally in love. This place was beyond cool. I could spend so much time just exploring around, and not gonna lie, I kinda did. I went around each aisle of books, lighting them up, and there was a couple of chests to loot, and some spawners that I ended up breaking, plus I stole a free block of iron, and a free block of gold, until I left the library and I finally found what I was here for. 
And the new portal room was crazy cool. This whole place had my mind imploding at the scene. I needed to make this place into my new base or something. So I placed down a waypoint and I named it God Tier Stronghold. And then I quickly stopped back at home so that way I could dump out my inventory of stuff that I had freshly looted along the way. And on day 88, I teleported back, fully lit up the portal, and I jumped through ready to destroy that dragon. And honestly, this fight went super well. I started by absolutely popping off with some bow shots to break all of the lower towers until I needed to water bucket my way up to break one of the highest crystals. And while I was up here, I quickly sniped out all of the remaining crystals. And now the only thing that was left between me and copious amounts of loot was beating that dragon. And for some reason, during this fight, the dragon was a tank. She didn't really take much damage from the Sharpness 4 crits, and it took me about four different cycles to take her down, including some pretty OP bow plays on my part, if I, if I do say so myself. And there also might have been this incident where she yeeted me into the air, and I almost enderpearled myself off of the cliff, but, um, don't, don't mention that in the comments, okay? Long story short, this fight ended up being GG easy, and I had conquered the end. So now that she was gone, I collected that sweet XP and I tried to take the egg, but it kind of just bugged out on the end portal middle column and just kind of like sat there. And honestly, I don't really care about it. The egg doesn't mean that much to me. So I just kind of left it. So after defeating the end dragon and rightfully claiming the end as my own domain on day 89, I built my way up to the Farlands portal, built a tiny platform around it and I enderpearled my way. And I had spawned on top of a ton of dark purple and black trees that if you've seen my 100 days in the modded end video, you'd probably be familiar with. However, this end was much different because in the distance, I saw my very first end tower and this thing looked insanely different than the vanilla one. So I began ender pulling my way over and my fight with the many shulkers had begun. Can I get a hello shulker boxes in the comment section? Anyways, one by one, I defeated all of the shulkers in the first room, and upon making my way up the tower, I saw a shulker spawner. Part of me really wanted to save it for some kind of cool shulker farm. So since it was far enough away from the rest of the tower, I kind of just left it there. So that way, you know, I could use it in the future if I wanted to. And after continuing on, I had figured, you know, maybe that was the only shulker spawner inside of the whole tower, right? Well, I would be very, very wrong because this entire tower was nutty. There were spawners everywhere in never-ending shulkers. And when I got to the top of this tower, it had eight more spawners and eight pedestals that had three different colored shulker boxes just kind of sitting on them. Plus an additional 16 chests full of busted enchanted items that included a ton of diamonds and items known as void totems that keep you alive if you fall into the void that I, of course, equipped into one of my two charm slots instead of one of my totems of undying. And honestly, I could sit here talking about this place for probably about an hour because there was just never ending mobs and crazy loot chests absolutely everywhere. In fact, each one of the mini towers in this end city have an additional shulker spawner up top in four more free colored shulker boxes. So I continued my way through every part of the end city until I was finally ready to take on the new end ship balloon. In Damn was this thing very well protected. There were sky demon spawners on top of it that I had to break and the shulkers were trying to send me into space and turn me into a pancake. But being the big brain that I was, I had brought enough water buckets, including enough to make sure they don't just randomly glitch out because that always seems to happen in the end. And I MLG water bucketed my way down on top of the balloon where I quickly dug into it until I finally broke in just to be swarmed by the super dangerous mimic that copies all of my armor and weapons. However, he was kind of a waste of time, so I didn't really bother fighting him, and I deleted all of the shulkers and their spawners instead, and I just kind of ran downstairs and shut the door in his face. And honestly, it wasn't much better down here. There were a ton more shulkers and spawners along this entire hallway that led up to the coveted elytra. So I quickly cleaned up the room and I collected all of my winnings from each busted chest and this elytra was already enchanted. So I right clicked to pick it up. And at this point, my mind exploded even further than it already was. This thing already had on breaking three and mending on it. And on top of that, it goes inside of a back slot in your inventory. So you always have an elytra on, even if you're wearing armor. 
I'm literally screaming right. I would like to be screaming so much louder about this. This thing blew my freaking mind. And it's safe to say that I was insanely excited about it because you can kind of just see me, you know, jerking the screen around. By the way, I'm sorry in advance for any whiplash or vertigo that I may have given you from this moment. But overall, it took me until the end of day 93 to finish looting this place. And it was so, so, so worth it. On day 94, now that the end city was fully explored, I placed down a waystone inside of the end balloon and I fast traveled home for 3 XP, which ended up ruining my sweet 69 levels. Anyways though, after getting home, I somewhat organized all of my earnings into two double chests, and just look at all this god tier loot that I found. I found tons of crazy enchanted diamond armors, including a perfect replacement helmet for mine, so I could even add more of the enchants like end veil that I wanted to in the first place. On top of that, I found tons of end totems, tons of colored shulker boxes, and in the second chest, there was a ton more loot, including 29 diamonds from one single end city, which is cracked. And on top of all of this, I could now fly. So the first thing that was on my mind was fireworks. I started by going through any and all of my chests, looking for all of the gunpowder that I had been collecting while exploring this world. Now, my only problem was paper. And because I wasn't a huge nerd, I didn't really have any. So at this point, my options were to start a sugarcane farm, but honestly, that would take too long and I didn't really have the time left in these 100 days. So the first thing instead that I did was look up the villagers inside of this mod pack to see if any of them traded for sugarcane until I had found the solution. I could make a purple altar and trade with an endologist directly for fireworks. Honestly, this mod pack is amazing. Go play it. If you haven't played it yet, go in the description down below, look at the link, click it. Also, look at my merch down there. Buy some merch for the holidays. It really helps me out. I love you. But please play the mod pack. Mod pack's great. Anyways, tangent over. So before going back to the end for some purple blocks to make that new altar, I used the little paper that I had to make tier three rockets and I took my brand new elytra for a spin. In flying around this world, just felt so, so right. Honestly, I really hope you all enjoy these 100 days because I would love to do 200 days of this mod pack. So if you do want to see that, definitely leave a like down below. They really help out the video and the algorithm and it lets me know that you guys enjoy the content. Anyways, I traveled back to the end and I struggled to take down the mimic that was spawn camping me and I fled over to the tower for some free per per blocks. And after that, I went all the way down to the ground to collect some more end stone. And now that I had everything that I needed, I flew back up to the balloon where I saw something interesting along the way. There was a pedestal that had a free end crystal inside. And of course, I happily yoinked that boy before heading back home for the day. On day 95, I started off the day with an inventory full of resources ready for some more capitalism with the boys. I began by trading iron, books, and sticks for emeralds, and I trapped a villager inside a paintopia that I made into an enderologist. And after leveling this guy up, it was pretty expensive but I finally got him to unlock rockets and eight of them costed a measly two emeralds which was lit so I bought as many of them as I could and now that my firework issues were solved pretty much indefinitely I teleported back home and I filled up my ender bag with shulkers and you could in fact put backpacks into those very shulkers it was some inception level stuff up in here I could put bags and boxes and bags in a box for days and now that all of my inventory was sorted and I only had a few days left, there was still something that I wanted to do. I wanted to go back to the nether fortress for some more wither skulls so I could kill the wither enough times for a sextuple beacon that I was then going to use to go over and crush that final pillager castle. So I traveled back to Paintopia and went through the ender portal because I am cheap and I didn't want to spend the three levels. And I quickly flew over to the nether fortress where I spent the rest of the day hunting wither skeletons, which didn't really spawn that much, but I did manage to get myself a seventh wither skull pretty quick. So even though this fortress sucks, I guess I couldn't complain. However, since this fortress wasn't spawning the numbers that I needed to get these skulls in time, on the next day, day 96, I stole the waypoint that was here and I used my elytra to fly away in search of a better fortress. And instead, I found this crazy, ominous looking blackstone castle. And upon landing on the top floor, there were some super unprotected chests that had pretty decent loot inside it, including my very first netherite ingot. However, things here seemed way too quiet for there to be this much loot. So I broke a hole in the floor to see, you know, what was going on down below. And this place ended up looking mad cursed. 
There are these terrifying creatures called Naga, along with an army of Blaze and some Wither Skeletons. So I ate a golden apple and I jumped in and joined the massacre. And honestly, there were so many mobs, the game started lagging like crazy, but overall, I came out victorious and I stole all of the loot from the chests as my reward. Plus, they also had a Gucci Wither Skeleton spawner, which was exactly what I needed. So I made this little jank looking area for them to spawn in and I spent the rest of the day farming Wither Skeletons with zero luck for skulls. And at this point, I was beginning to doubt that these skeletons could even drop skulls because honestly, Honestly, if I was a game dev, that wouldn't make much sense because these spawners would be super overpowered. And I'm sure they definitely thought of that. So on day 97, I gave up on the spawner and I set back out flying looking for a good nether fortress. And at this point, it wasn't looking very promising that I was going to make a beacon in time before day 100. However, that was kind of okay because while exploring more of the nether, I got to see a lot of these beautiful looking biomes. And I also found this blackstone pyramid with some pretty cool looking loot that I barely got to touch because the place exploded while almost killing me. But hey, I still got a free protection for a book and some gold. Plus, my totem didn't pop. So you know what? I'll take that as a W. So with that not so near death experience behind me, I continued exploring in search for a fortress. And just when I thought I had found one, it turned out to be this absolutely stunning looking nether city. And this place is full of so many different nice looking blocks that I may have stole a couple of. And this place ended up being a massive distraction. I explored around here for a couple of minutes looking for cool loot until I realized that there was basically nothing here for me. So it was back to my search. I had to be strong and not be distracted because I was running out of time. And luckily enough, my search ended up not being that much longer because right next door, there was a massive nether fortress that was still pretty void of wither boys, but there was quite a few chests that even had a couple of diamonds in them. However, at this point, I was kind of just done hunting for withers in general. So instead of actually using this place, I placed down a waypoint and I went back to my base to cut my losses. Or at least that's what I thought I would do. However, I am very stubborn as you all may probably know. So instead on day 98, I went back to the nether in search for more wither skulls. And upon getting there, I stole the waystone and I set out exploring, looking for the perfect fortress. And along the way, I found pretty much everything except for that. I first stopped by another one of those blackstone pyramids, except this time I was the bigger brain and I broke the trap and stole all of the TNT, just like you would do for a regular pyramid. And the loot ended up being kind of decent, but I mean, I still stole it, of course. Duh. Anyways, after stopping by that ticking time bomb, I continued on my way until I found this white tower looking structure in the middle of lava that had some wither skeletons. And it turns out those skeletons ended up being the least of my worries because there were gas spawners everywhere and they were beyond annoying. There was only one chest here and I was trying to loot it. So I placed down my cyan shulker box so I can clean out my inventory that conveniently had all of my loot inside of it, may I add, and a gas shot it and and blew it up before I could pick it up. These guys are literally the worst. So now that all of that loot was gone, I built my way up to the chest anyways, and I got some gold and two diamonds. Not at all worth it. I had in fact been bamboozled. So I just kind of left the place. And not long after I continued flying around the nether, I finally found my third fortress. And after taking down only a couple of skelly boys, I had gotten my eighth wither skull. So I spent the rest of this day and all of day 99 grinding through the slim spawns that I was getting. And with all of that work, I was rewarded with only two more skulls that would allow me to summon only my third wither. So you know what? Since I was now out of time, I was probably just going to have to settle for that. Or at least that's what I had thought because right before leaving, I stopped by this nearby piglin tower and they just had a couple of wither statues chilling outside that had two free real estate wither skulls. So now I was able to summon my fourth wither. On day 100, now that I was officially out of time, it was time to take on all four of the withers that I could summon as one massive boss fight to send off the series. And of course, there is no place better to do this than the end. So I teleported back to my stronghold 
and I jumped inside of the portal, and I went to begin digging underneath the return end portal, so that way I could cheese these guys, of course, like any man of culture would, and unfortunately, because the portal wasn't made of bedrock, the wither just kind of phased through it like it was nothing, so I had to shoot him up the old-fashioned way with Shooty McShootface, and my bow did so much damage to this guy that he quickly switched into close range mode, and he aggroed on me, so I banned him from my chat with Simp Slayer, and I guess at this point, I was stuck fighting the other three in one-on-one -on -one battles face to face so one by one i spawned them in hoping that they would stay stuck but the second i attacked them they broke out which honestly was probably on purpose because the mod pack doesn't want you to cheese stuff but you know what it's fine because just like that i had slain each beast one by one by one and I now had four nether stars along with these four cores that sounded pretty ominous. It also just so happened that one of the withers had freed my dragon egg that was stuck up on top of the portal. So I guess things do work out in the end. No pun intended. So anyways, now that I had done everything that I had came here for, I jumped back through the portal and it was already nighttime. So no day 100 sundown for me. And that is the story of how I survived and conquered 100 days of hardcore, better Minecraft mod pack. And honestly, I really want to keep playing because there's still so much left undone and so many things that I haven't yet looted or experienced. So if you do want to see me play 200 days, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video. If we do get the 30,000 likes, then I will do 200 days. Also, if you've made it this far into this mega long video, then you probably like what I do. So don't forget to subscribe and check out the links that I have in the description down below. Also, fun fact, if you follow me on Twitter, I will literally play Minecraft. Crazy. Anyways, this has been Pain Domination, and I hope you all have an amazing day. Peace.